Welcome back to Let's Play Gran Turismo 4 Part 5. Fifth and final license is upon us. And we will never have to go back to these things for the rest of the LP. So, let's just get this shit over with. So, to most people, the super license is the hardest, and it makes sense because they are the longest tests, considering you have to do complete full laps for every single test. So, we're starting it off here at Twin Ring Motegi in a front wheel drive Civic without assist, thank god. So, whenever I did this test a couple weeks ago on the PS2, it took me a long ass time. And considering it was the first super license test, it did not put me in a good mood to have to do something like this 15 more times. But I promise you, the rest of the tests aren't as hard as the first one. Some of them are, but most of them aren't, so... Don't have really much to worry about, at least. But somehow, the first test was actually easier with the wheel than a controller. I don't know if it's just because it was easier with the wheel, or if it's because I already kind of knew how to go around Motegi in this specific car, but I don't know. So, yeah, this is going to be a long one. I think the video is like around 45 minutes long, and there's no way in hell I could keep up a post-commentary for that duration. So, my commentary is going to be a little sparse in this, so bear with me. And, yeah. Also, for the fact that, for some reason, I kind of lost a little bit of my voice after I got back from the gym. I don't know how the fuck that happens, but it did. So, you might hear some middle school puberty-esque shit coming from my voice every now and then. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah. Approaching the final hairpin. Not the hairpin, what the fuck? I'm already losing my brain cells. The chicane, God damn it. And yeah. Got this one by a few hundredths of a second. This one's kind of strict, but eventually you should get a gold. I guarantee, well, I wouldn't say guarantee. I'm like 99.69% sure that most of you watching this don't even give a shit about going for all golds for yourselves. But if you do, then hey, that's great. Some of this shit just takes a long, long, long time. So here's a first attempt run on Cita Diaria. I also had it first attempt on PS3, so as long as you know the track, this shouldn't be too hard. I kind of like these old school European cars. Same with the Japanese ones. They're kind of cool. Slow, but cool. So for this one... Your best bet is to do that chicane as fast as you possibly can, because you'll gain a lot of time if you do do it right, and you'll lose a lot of time if you do it too slow. So use that as like a solid reference as to like how the rest of the lap is going to go. So, in other news, I am trying out some new color correction settings. Uh, you'll probably notice that the game looks a lot better. Well, for now, in like a couple tests, I'm actually going to have to lower the resolution because for some reason the emulator does not like Special Stage Route 5. So I had to lower the resolution on that, and it was also low on Seattle and a few other tests, but I changed it back eventually. But yeah, other than that, uh, let me know what you guys think of the color correction settings. It basically makes the game look a lot less washed out and more vibrant, so I think it looks pretty cool. It's probably going to stay that way. I'm going to try to not do it whenever I'm in the menus because it kind of makes everything too white. 
And it's kind of blinding, to be honest, but hey. So yeah, uh, this was a pretty solid run to begin with, so... There is room for error. So, shouldn't have to stress too much about it. Don't even bother downshifting the second right there. I don't know why the fuck I did it, but... Yeah. Sometimes you just can't really pay attention to the suggested gear... thing. Which I wish I could disable. There is an option to do that. The only problem is it gets rid of other vital information on the HUD, like your... lap counter, your position... and your lap times. Which it would show you after, after you pass, uh... sectors or the start-finish line, but yeah. Selena 7 on special special stage route 5 special ed route 5 yes and I think the color corrections make this track in particular pop so much more and I love it but yeah the S7 is surprisingly not over Siri considering it's a mid-engine uh, you do have assists you're gonna understeer pretty much the entire time. You don't have to worry about oversteering this thing at all. And this one's kind of difficult, but it's not too bad. And yeah, not much to say about this one. Just break early right here, so you can take this uh, chicane faster. Kind of got a little loose right there, but not too bad. I think I hit the wall right here. Yep. Smack. And down the straightaway. Passed it with only like one tenth of a second to spare. So you're, you're going to be on it for a while, but there's others that are harder. This one is... The track itself isn't challenging, the time isn't too strict, the problem is the car. This is another one of the cars I'd like to slide out on you, cause mid-engine, no assists. So you kinda gotta be careful with this one. Make sure you're not braking while turning with this one in particular. I went way wide right there. So I lost at least a good half a second to a full second. Probably not a full second, probably just half a second. And yeah, it's going to be really challenging trying to keep up a commentary for a whole 45 minutes. We're only eight minutes in, and this is the fourth test, I believe. Yeah, it is the fourth. Try to break preemptively for that jump, because if you don't break for it, then you're probably going to go flying into the wall, which is never a good time. You'll see in this section, it wants to get loose on me again. I actually lost control of the car in this section several times because you're steering left and you're steering right immediately, and that kind of kicks the back end out, so just take it easy. Don't worry about losing too much time. You can ride the outside wall if you're that shit, but I'm not shit, so I'm going to slide it around the corner instead. This is probably the sketchiest part of the track, just just be careful. That's all I can really say with that section. If you're braking and you have slight steering input, you're just gonna go flying into the wall. Every single time. Don't hit those cones. Don't hit the outside wall right there. And yeah, pretty much home free at this point. Pretty sure I downshift the first? No, I do not. And there we go. Beat it by, I think, yeah, a little over a second. One of the easier tests on here, as long as you learn how to control the car right. This is also another really easy one. I'm surprised how easy this one is, because this run was terrible. But I still golded it. 
So, yep, Ford GT, the 05 Ford GT on Seattle Circuit. Try to stay off that curb because it will throw the front end up a lot if you hit it head on. Brake preemptively right here because, yeah, uphill crest, you'll lose all your grip. Actually lose, I almost lose it completely right here, but you can see I just counter sear and slide it all the way through. Every single time I do this test, that happens, so. Yeah. Down the back straight. Over the hill. Break at the 100 meter mark. Go through the bus stop like so. Top tier commentaries right here, ladies and gentlemen. And the chicane for the last section. You just gotta slow down a tad, just make sure you don't fuck up your entire run by going too fast through there. And there you go. Pretty damn forgiving test, I'll say that. So, here's the first rally test. Back on the ice arena. Also the shortest test in this license. It took me a couple attempts. Uh, I kept getting on the throttle way too early and just flying into the wall. So like any other rally test, you just gotta take it steady, control your throttle, control your steering, keep it close to the inside if you can, stay in second gear. And that's Pretty much it. Same shit as always. I can tell you right now though, the rally events with a wheel are going to suck ass. Like, bad. Because rally is a hell of a lot more challenging with a wheel because you can't steer as fast with the wheel as you can with a controller, technically. Although you have more control with a wheel, you're probably going to spin out a lot more with a wheel. Just because you can't correct it enough in time. Back in another Mercedes, whoop de fucking do. Here at Trial Mountain. This one wasn't too bad, but it does take a few attempts. At least the SLR McLaren Mercedes, SLR McLaren, I don't know why it's called a McLaren when it's a Mercedes, but what the fuck ever. But yeah. It's actually kind of a decent car. I will say that. It kinda sounds very bad, so I don't know why I said kinda and very in the same sentence. That makes zero fucking sense, I'm already losing my mind. And we're only like a quarter of way through this goddamn video. So, fuck me. Here comes a sketchy section that we did in the roof yellow bird in the last license. Could have lost it really easily right there, but just kept the wheel straight and clinched my ass cheeks very hard. Was that gay? I don't know. But yeah. almost lose it right there. I noticed that like whenever I use a wheel my oversteer whenever I do oversteer is way more severe than on a controller. So yeah. That'll make driving certain cars a lot more interesting at least. And plus, if I want to fuck around with a drift car, then, hey, I could go drifting on, like, Apricot Hill or Motorland Park or some shit. I don't know. 
here in the Takata Dome. Uh, JTCG? Japanese Grand Touring Car Championship, whatever the fuck, I don't fucking remember what the series is. Basically a Super GT or Group 2 NSX. Old school NSX, real NSX, not that new garbage that they have. So, in this section, it never happened to me with a wheel, but with a controller, right there, at that spot, I would lose control of the car for no reason. There's like a slight dip in the road, and it gives you a fuck ton of grip for like a quarter of a second, and it just causes your car to launch in the opposite direction. Well, no, that's not the right fucking way to say it. Just causes your car to fly into a wall, I guess. God damn it. But yeah, you can cheat on this one if you're bad, like I said, but yeah. At the worst test in the world, but still a little bit time consuming. And there you go. I am yawning. Yes. Even I believe this video is boring. Here we go with the last coffee break of this goddamn LP. The fucking cone maze. So, I had to do a few things during this to actually even have a remote chance of passing it with the fucking wheel. First thing is I had to turn the sensitivity up in my Logitech G-Hub thing as high as it will go, so... The rotation in game is faster than how much I have to rotate the wheel physically. And there's also an X plate. You see what I just did right there where I just fling the car like that? If you just drive up to the wall with your bump, like you just place your bumper on the wall, turn the steering wheel full lock, then it'll just slide your car out like that. Like, yeet. So. Yes, it is an explain. Explain? Yeah, I don't know why my voice just went like that. Yeah, my brain is officially being fried right now, ladies and gentlemen, but. I know it's an exploit, but I already have a handicap with the wheel whenever it comes to this test, so I don't give a fuck. No fucks given. Painfully slow. But. Beat it by a solid amount at least. So there we go. No more coffee breaks. Ever a fucking again. Thank god. But now we have to deal with this. Yeah, this test is one of the bad ones. So. We have a Viper. At least it has traction and stability on. I actually kind of glad it does because Vipers, everybody knows, are very, very tail happy. And mixing that aspect with this track is always a recipe for disaster. I took that section so good. I was like kind of cooming whenever I did that because holy shit, that's hard to do. Take it easy over this section. This is where I fail 90% of the time. You cannot take that flat out, trust me. And yeah. This one is kind of strict. Because I think this was a solid run, but I kind of barely got it, considering it. Could have done that a lot better. I had to correct it a little bit because I thought I was getting loose, but I really wasn't. It was just my retarded ass instincts kicking in. Went a little wide right there, but not too big of an issue. So for some reason, it doesn't matter how fucking hard I hit the wall, like there about like five seconds ago, there's actually an invisible barrier in the gravel to the right. And barely touching that 
would fail me. Even though, like, I don't have four wheels off the road. And it makes no fucking sense. Like, you could tickle the wall and it will fail you for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with it, but... Yeah. There's pretty much a demonstration of how to gold that one if you guys need it. So, the longest rally test in this license on the Grand Canyon. And at least this one's very lenient because I beat it by three seconds. By some stretch of fuckness. I don't think the run was too bad either. It was kind of decent, I'd say. But I beat it by three seconds, so you could take this run, add three seconds of extra fuck ups to it, and you'll still be fine. Not really much to explain about this because I don't really have any tips for rally. You just gotta keep doing it until you hold it, pretty much. Just try not to go too wide. Try to keep it steady. Ride the wall if you need to, if you're shit like I am. Even though I said I'm not shit in the other fucking tests. Five star hypocrite right here. Keep your speed up through here. Slow down preemptively so you don't run into the wall. And go flying off the cliff, which would be a cool feature. But no, it's just... A solid wall. And yeah, jump. Jump. Kind of took this a little wide, but wasn't too big of an issue. Stay close to the inside so you don't hit the invisible wall to the left, because that will fail you. Retardedly so. And I used first gear in this car, mainly because it wasn't like a powerful rally car, so... That pretty much determines if I use first gear or not. So in rally cars, you'll have like a lot of turbo lag, if you stay in second gear, the turbo's gonna kick in while the wheels are spinning anyways, and then you'll gain a lot of speed that way. But if you go into second gear in these kind of cars, the engine will just keep being bogged down for a lot longer, and it, you'll just be better off downshifting into first for that extra torque. And there you go. Three fucking seconds, somehow. I was even bamboozled whenever I did it. Trust me. So, this one. This one's a little tough. Like, by the car, at least. It really likes to get loose on you. So, you kind of got to be steady with this one as well. But at least the harder section of the track, at least in this car is right off the bat, so you don't have to wait till the very end for the hardest part. So it shouldn't take you too long to do because of that. And you can see it actually got loose right there, but 90% of the time going through that a double chicane or the bus stop, it would just... I'd lose complete control over it and I'd have to restart. So, yeah. I know I already mentioned it before, but I really like this track. Something about it. I don't know what. So, coming down the back straight, there is a pretty bad hazard. You can see the wall to the right right there. Don't touch it. Because if you touch it, you're going fast enough to where it's obviously going to fail you, so... Yeah. Save the car, not a few tenths of time.
going around the final sweeper turn wherever it floats your boat. And there you go. Not too bad. First completed lap at least. And here we go, the fucking one lap at Suzuka. Thank Jesus tit fucking Christ, it didn't take me as long as it did on PS3, but it still took a while. And also, my fuck ass forgot to record it, so thank God I saved the replay. So you're watching the replay of it instead. And I thought I'd use this camera view because I thought it looked cool, so screw it. So yeah, handled the S's quite well. I always fuck up at this turn as well. It's really easy to go too wide right there. I think I took this section quite slow. I, yeah, that was pretty slow. That was okay. If you cross that line around 51 seconds and you're pretty good so far, if it's any less than 51 seconds, you might as well restart because... You can see the best lap time, that's actually the time of this run, so... I got it by half a second, so I guess that would be a good reference because of that. Approaching Spoon Corner. Another area where I commonly fuck up. But I think I did it pretty good. Oh yeah, that was beautiful. It's been a while since I watched a few of these, so... Approaching the high-speed kink. I believe I just left the throttle just a tad. I have tapped the brakes just like... Yeah, just literally tapped it. Did the chicane very well. And at this point I was like, yes, 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 that's it, that's it. And I was like, yes! Kind of like how I reacted to finally beating the Gymkhana coffee break in the last license. So yeah, that one was a bitch. This one, difficulty-wise, isn't too bad. This is the Audi R8 LMP1 car. So the actual Audi R8, the one we all know, wasn't actually produced when this game came out. Key to this one is just take the first section of the track fast. That, yeah, just take it fast. And then you're pretty set. Also, don't fuck up right there like I did. So yeah, the Audi R8 is the first, or actually second, LMP1 car you get thrown in. It's just not Group C like the R92 CP in the last test, or license, I should, I should say. Fucking stuttering. Stop it, damn it. But yeah. Uh, not particularly a fan of this one. I don't know why, it's just... I think the braking in this LMP1 car kind of sucks compared to the others. So that's kind of why I never really use it. But... It's okay, I guess. But yeah, there we go. About a full second. Now we hear, we hear, yes, we hear at the Shamonix. 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 I'm just gonna fucking call it Shamonix. If I'm wrong, fuck it. Who cares? So yeah, you're in Alancia here at the Snowy Technical Tourney Place, as they also called it. Really getting loose right here. I actually had a lot of fun doing this section, because you're kind of doing all-wheel drive drifts, because you're on snow tires. Pretty much zero asphalt grip. With the wheel, it's fun. With the controller, it's dreadful, because you just understeer the whole way through it. So, yeah. Also, I hit the wall a lot of times. Wall. Whenever I say a lot of times, 
I mean a lot of wall. A lot of times. So, yeah, wall. Wall. Expect me to say that quite a bit throughout this one. Wall. We need to build a wall. To stop Rowdy from wall. Flying off the wall. Flying off the track. Wherever he does the snow tests. Because wall. Have I ever mentioned I'm insanely hilarious? Yeah, you are all speechless right now because I'm so funny. Pretty much the same story with all the snow tests. Slow and steady, keep it close to the inside. Try not to go flying into the wall like I do. But if you want to, you can. I'm not going to sit here and dictate how you play a fucking 15-year-old game. But in this last section, I'm like, okay, I'm good on time, I'm good on time. Oh shit, I overcorrected, let me just ride the wall. Because at that point, I didn't fucking care, I made it that far, I'm getting across the line before I get a silver instead. So yeah. No more shenanigans with the wall. Okay, I'll stop. I'm so sorry. So yeah. This is probably my favorite LMP1 car on the game. As far as like cars outside of Group C. The Bentley Speed 8. This thing is awesome. But this is probably the easiest test on this entire license, just because of how lenient the times are. Yes, the car could throw some people off by the way it handles, by the way it drives and everything, but it's still easy. So here at uh, Circuit de la Sarth, or Circuit de la Sarth, whatever floats your boat, however the fuck you want to pronounce it, whatever, wheel is shaking all the way down the Molson Strait again. Yeah. Doing any race on this uh, track is going to be a pain in the ass. I don't even want to get started with the fucking 24 hour races that are going to be later in the LP. Because going down the Molson Strait with a wheel for 24 hours is not going to be fun. Not in the slightest. There goes the wheel shaking again. <laughs> it's pretty fucking bad. And I don't think I could turn it off to be honest. So, pretty much you're doing Circuit de, Circuit de la Sauf with the chicanes this time. And I beat this thing by three seconds. So there's a lot of play in this. As far as, like, mistakes go. Pretty much, like, your number one concern just has to be keeping the thing on the track. If you do that, then probably shouldn't really need to worry about time so much. I have no idea why, but the bronze time is 3 minutes 36 seconds. I don't know who the fuck would ever only be able to get a bronze on this test because, my god, it's so easy. Even though the car might be a learning curve for some people, but you were in an R92 CP in the previous test anyways, so not too much difference. And at least this time, you actually have traction and stability control on, so... In these kind of cars, stability is eh, but traction control is kind of a plus. So there's that, at least. So approaching the Porsche curves, yes, you do have to slow down a little bit. I slowed down a little bit extra. Just because I knew how easy this test was, I wasn't really worried about losing too much time. And yeah. Just make your priority keeping it on the pavement. 
Approaching the forge chicane. You can cut it a little bit more than I did, but I don't like to cheat that much. And there we go. Three seconds. Absolute cakewalk. And finally, the final license test of the game. But also the longest. Well, second longest. I take that back. So, yep. One final lap around the green hell, aka the Nordschleife. In the same car as the previous test, except this is a touring car version. So, yep. One last wink to Mercedes. For now. Yep. There are more. Sadly. So... Yeah, there's kind of not much to explain about this one. So this test... I think I beat it by... 12 seconds? Probably about 12 seconds or so, so... The time is lenient with this one as well, just not as lenient as the one lap guide run from the previous uh, license, so... Either that, or it's just the fact that I probably did a little bit too poor on this run, but I don't know. Just keep the car on the track. That's like the number one priority. And then, once you do complete a lap and you get your benchmark, for you, you'll actually, if you're doing it on PS2, you'll actually have a ghost car to use for a reference as you're doing other tests. But, for me, at least, the ghost car never works, so, kinda don't have that option. So yeah, just take it easy around the Nordschleife in this thing. Don't go off the track, try to complete a lap. If you get gold, you get gold, and congratulations. If you don't, try again and find where you can improve. As long as you know the track, it's not difficult. Unfortunately, there is a specific driving mission later on in the LP that we're going to be doing. I would, I've never been able to complete it. At least I don't think I ever completed it. At any point in my lifetime. I don't know how strict the driving missions are compared to the license tests. I know, like, at least the first 20 missions are pretty easy. I'm not really sure about the ones after that. But, the prize cars for the driving missions are very, very rewarding. So they are worth doing. But they're still tedious, regardless. Not much really left to explain about this test in particular. All I can really say is, like, if you need references with how to go around the lap, you can pretty much notice sections where I go too slow, sections where I can go faster, and basically just take that as a reference and build upon it. Could have take, taken that a little bit faster. But like I said, my main goal was just staying on track. Approaching the carousel. Which is a thing. With concrete tiles on it for some reason. Approaching this section, that's pretty easy for people to go flying off. It's 
better to be going too slow than too fast. I took that section a lot faster than I usually do. For some reason I get that corner and uh, YouTube corner mixed up, so I'll slow down a little bit too much for it. But now we're approaching YouTube corner. Another common place for people to fly off. As well as this corner coming up. A lot of people tend to go off right there because the track keeps twisting around while the barrier goes straight. Make sure you slow down for this last corner right here. I slowed down a shitload for it. Kind of lost a lot of momentum because of it. And yeah, now you're flat out up until a certain point. Flat out around all those blind crests. Slow down just a little bit for this. And now you're back to regular corners. Approaching half-ass carousel. And yeah, if you pass half-ass uh, half carousel around 6 minutes and 5 seconds or earlier, you're in pretty good shape. If you need that as like a reference. If you need another reference, if you're passing underneath underneath this gate thing at around, I'd say, 6 minutes and 27 seconds, you're also in good shape. As long as you don't fuck up the last section. Taking a good look at the car right there. Even though the wheel's in the way. So, uh, by the time I'm doing this commentary, I've actually recorded a few of the next events. At least three of them, and I disabled the wheel uh, display. And I also don't know if I'm going to be using wheel cam in the episodes. I guess it just depends on the feedback, even though there is no feedback at all right now because nobody's really watching, but it's whatever. I'm not really too worried about views or anything. But... Holy shit. Okay, I was completely wrong. I only beat the spy like... Two seconds. Huh. Well, damn. I probably just... Got everyone's hopes up. And then just crushed it with like, Oh yeah, I did it in 12 seconds. Nope. Just, just two seconds. Yeah, everything you saw, yeah, you kind of have to improve a little bit more than I did. But here we go. Prize car time. First off, a vanilla Mercury Cougar. Pretty useful. Next up, we have the Pontiac Solstice Coupe. The concept version. Kinda of fucking ugly, not gonna lie. And then finally, we get the best car in the game. E yeah. A f I believe it's 15 horsepower Ford Model T Tour. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a 2015. No, it it 1915. Yeah. So okay, finally pressed okay. God damn it. Showing all the gold trophies and all that stuff. Go back to the main menu. God damn it. Do it. I'm losing my mind right now. Well, whatever's left of it. Finally. Shit. So yeah, that's pretty much all the license tests out of the way for this game, finally. And we can start getting onto actual racing events. At least until we get to the driving missions. But I'm gonna save that till a little bit later. So yeah. Uh, I'm going to start off with two of the special condition events, and then we'll be moving on to the beginner events. And I'm going to try to keep using a variety of different cars throughout the events, so 
I'm gonna need to do some money grinding. But that will be off camera. So yeah, stay tuned for more GT4.